Hi guys, I'm Wes Goldsmith with Aquatic Control. I'm a fisheries biologist here. It's springtime and we've had a lot of calls coming in about some initial pond stocking. Um, so we're gonna cover some of the common questions surrounding that topic today. What type of fish should I get put in initially? So typically most people are going to do your bass bluegill ponds. Um, another common one to add in there that I highly recommend is red ear sunfish. And then you're also, when you first stock your pond, you're going to want to put some kind of extra forage fish like a fathead minnow or a golden shiner. So when I get those put in, how many are we looking at getting put in initially and is there a certain size range I should, should choose? Right. So when you're first starting out, you're going to be stocking mostly fingerling fish. So in your one, for your bluegill and red ear, one to three inch, two to three inch, uh, depending where you're getting them from. And then I also like to bump up and do a, a small portion of them, you know, the next size up that they have, three to four or three to five inch. As far as densities, um, one thing you're definitely going to want to do before you get too far into this is measure the pond. That way you know a surface acre. Um, a lot of the stocking stuff we do is based on surface acres. So a real uh, basic and common um, you know, stocking plan that we'll do, if you're just looking for a balanced pond, you'll want to look at 10 to 1 stocking ratio for your bass to bluegill per surface acre. So if you're less than a surface acre, you'll need to calculate that down. Um, but generally, for a balanced pond, we're going to look at 1,000 bluegill per surface acre, about 100 largemouth bass per surface acre, and we usually do around 300 red ear per surface acre. And then with your forage, you're going to want to do you know, I'd do at least 10 pounds per surface acre. You could go up to 30 pounds per surface acre. Um, and you can do all fathead minnows, you can do all golden shiners, or you can do a mix. Uh, you know, some hatcheries have one or the other or both. Um, usually looking at 10 to 30, 30 pounds per surface acre there. Something else to mention, <clears throat> the most recommended way I like to stock a pond is to do it in a two-year plan. So you'll want to do your forage base first, which will include your bluegill, your red ear, and then your fatheads or golden shiners in that first year. And then in the second year, you'll want to come in and stock your bass. And the reason for that is to allow those forage fish to, you know, grow up a little bit. You may get a, especially if you do that next size up, those three to five inch fish, you may get a spawn off. And then that'll also let your forage, as far as your fatheads or golden shiners, they may reproduce and really fill out your forage base. And then you, when you go to put your predators, those largemouth bass, they're really gonna have a lot of food. And, uh, you know, when you first stock a pond, it's pretty impressive the growth that you can see in the first couple years for your bass and bluegill and red ear. Do I need to feed these the fish initially? So actually you don't. That's a common question that we get. Your fish will do just fine when you first stock them. They're going to be eating, you know, small bugs, some zooplankton, that kind of stuff, and they're going to grow pretty well without the food. Now with that said, if you have the extra resources and you kind of want to speed up this process of getting your pond into a place where you can come fish and catch quality fish, it definitely does help, you know, if you can start feeding right off the bat. And that's another reason that I like to add, you know, a small portion of my bluegill and red ear stocking 
that neck size up. Because when you go with those three to fives, some of those fish are gonna be you know, ready to hit that feed pretty quick when you first put them in there. And they're gonna be growing at a, at a really nice rate. And then you'll, you know, that's something you can keep throughout the life of your pond. And you're gonna, you know, really grow some really nice panfish that way. And it also helps, you know, keep producing more food, you know, up the food chain for your predators like your largemouth bass. What time of year is best to do this sort of thing? Time of year is another common question. Um, you know, it's spring right now. <clears throat> a lot of people's new ponds have been filling up, you know, for the last six months or so. Spring and fall are, is the common answer. Um, but, you know, when you get your, your bass the second year, a lot of times they may not come in until June, which is fine. You know, if you're working with a good hatchery, they can take care of the fish with a little bit warmer temperatures. But when you start getting into July and August, we usually try to, you know, we're doing other stuff around the pond. You typically want to stock when the water temperatures are cooler. It's a lot easier on the fish. So what type of habitat do I need if I need any? Yeah, so that's another, another big one to consider um, when you have a new pond. And I'll tell you this, when you're waiting on your pond to fill up, when you're waiting on all that rain to come and fill your pond up, that's <clears throat> the best time to be thinking about your habitat, which a lot of people, you know, they miss that step. When your pond is just first dug, um, and even while you are having it dug, you should be thinking about where the habitat's gonna go, um, leaving some shallow areas for, you know, spawning, and then making sure you have you know, deeper areas of your pond as well. But as that water is filling up and there's still area on your bank where it's dry, where you can get in there and work, that's when you should be bringing in, you can do artificial, you can bring in, you know, tie up your own brush piles, Christmas trees, you know, all that's good stuff, but it's a lot easier to get in there <clears throat> before the water gets up here. Now, even with the water already you know, being full, it's not too late. You can still, you know, wade out there in the shallow water, use a boat. We can, you know, we can help you out with that kind of stuff as well. But you want to keep in mind, you want spawning habitat, and then you also want protective habitat for your forage and your smaller fish. So um, having bluegill spawning habitat is, is pretty key as for about every surface acre, we like to do at least one, maybe two, you know, 10 by 10 or 12 by 12 area of pea gravel. And that's where you'll notice bluegill will, will start spawning there. When the water temperature warms up, they'll be there. Um, the other thing is, is that protective habitat for your forage base. So you want something complex. Um, a Christmas tree is a good example of that. Um, and then if you're gonna do artificial structure, uh, you just wanna make sure there's a, enough real small little spaces for those fish to get into. And then other stuff just to put out as fish attractors. So when you're fishing on the pond, you know those different areas where you can go to and put your grandkids on them. And you know, you can count on fish being around those areas. Thanks for joining us guys. I hope we answered some of your questions. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to give us a call. And if you need help, you know, figuring out a stocking plan and getting the fish in your newly, you know, filled up pond, just give us a call and we can help you out.